Hello friends, we have Dr. Gayatri Venkat Ramni from Bellur Institute of Technology. She is working in the field of solar energy and she has been on a big young scientist program to South Africa. So Gayatri, if I could ask you briefly about your academic journey, how you have reached here. I understand you have done your graduation and master from Anna and your PhD from there. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for this opportunity, first of all, sir. Uh, my academic journey actually began as an electrical and electronics engineering. And uh, that was my bachelor program. And later, like I was a little bit interested to work towards on energy. And I found a platform that Anna University is offering a specific course on solar energy, which is actually uh, funded by government of India for doing the post-graduation program. And we being the second batch for ME Solar Energy in Anna University. And I, after I completed my master's, I turned out as gold medalist. And of course, I pushed you to join PhD with more interest on research because I've seen so many research scholars who are you know, working so much in the research lab. And out of that thirst, I've joined for PhD. So during my PhD phase, I understood like how all the professors are so eminent in fetching so many research proposals from DSD, the way they write, they interact with the scientists and the interest on setting up their own research laboratory, all these things, no, like I learned it from my doctoral guide. And then that has given me a very big interest to do all these kind of proposal drafting and all these things. And that helped me a lot when I stepped in as an assistant professor at VIT. Initially, my journey at VIT started at CO2 and the green technology research and right now I am with Center for Clean Environment of VIT. So there the research ecosystem is so good such that every individual faculty are getting a very good autonomy to write their own project and of course the paper drafting and up to many eminent scientists from DST and they are giving training how to write the proposals and how to fetch the projects and how to work with international people. So all these put together built my academic journey with all the eminent people. The first and foremost thing what I would say is the level of collaboration we are getting from different people and the way we inspire through so many other professors and scientists. That is the first spark of my academic and research journey. So through so many people I have been uh, Im impacted and because of that I started my journey on energy and of course energy is one of the booming area even now uh, when artificial intelligence is entering for even to power the AI sources the energy is one of the most important uh, area. So, of course, in DST, everywhere you get a lot of calls in energy and particularly on renewable technologies and as well. So, that level of number of calls we get that has impacted me to work more. Of course, failures is a step stepping stone of success. Like, we have also drafted so many proposals which do failed. And then we started attending so many programs given by scientists and we understood how should we write the objective, how should we write the deliverable, all these things. That's so, that's something that... really wonderful. Can you yes, suggest uh, some tips to the listeners? What a good proposal should be? What are the essential items uh, one must take care of while writing projects? So not full lecture, but just if you can give the tips. So the, to my point, the first and foremost thing is you should have a very broad spectra. What is the national mission or towards in what way you are going to contribute to your country? Like that agenda should be internally there when you draft any proposal. If you start writing with that agenda, you will end up in a very right deliverable. Suppose I want to develop a technology at this particular TRL level or this technology readiness level. So you will be knowing what is your deliverable. First of all, when we write the proposal, we should know, okay, this will be my outcome after the completion of three years of my project. So then we will not go in a very wrong direction. And sometimes we write unbelievable objectives. So we should write the objective which is easily achievable and which is practically achievable. And what is the expectation of the funding body? Like every body will give a specific call based on some agenda or some synergical points. So if we can very clearly understand what is the objective of the funding body, I'm sure like we can write a very good proposal. Nothing else is required. Suppose the thought of the funding body and our thought synergizes, I think the proposal yes. rate is successful. So so. That sync is required. So thank you exactly, very much sir. for the sharing these tips. Uh, Gayatri has been awarded uh, this BRICS Young Scientist uh, Fellowship. So you had a short exposure of peers from BRICS member countries. And how was your experience of this uh, Young Scientist program? And uh, what would be your message for those who are looking forward to such things? 
So in BRICS, actually, that is a very big transforming point for each and every person who have attended the uh, BRICS Young Scientist Forum. And that is a very platform, very nice platform for networking from different backgrounds and domain. And I personally felt that is the first platform for me to collaborate in a very broader interdisciplinary manner from different countries. That is the first thing. And second thing, after getting that uh, particular uh, BRICS expo exposure, I personally feel my international collaborative contacts has increased in several folds. So because of that, like we got contact from BRICS countries and of course we have started writing the proposals on BRICS uh, particular theme. And besides that, I have collaborated with an MI call, joint MI call on the green energy transformation. Mm -hmm. So that particular just, proposal... Just for our like, audience, MI means mission innovation. Mission yeah. Innovation uh, Research Proposal yeah. Call, exactly, yeah. sir. Yeah. So yeah. that particular call was very, uh, like, very competitive. But my confidence level has increased so much after I faced the BRICS platform and forum because if for every individual, definitely they will be a little bit timid. They don't know how to present or after seeing so many international people and eminent people, when we start presenting before them, I personally felt the level of confidence has increased so much such that when we meet an expert panel or expert professors, we will be very clear to deliver what we are trying to say and what we are presenting. So my in my call project was successful we are collaborated with five countries and initially i felt that drafting the proposal was so difficult but my presentation became so easy it's because of the exposure i had with the brics team so and sweet. my team was a wonderful team so all the 20 people and the eminent scientists including you from the dst like everybody supported us in very better way in all our humps and jumps in all the struggles not only through the technical aspect, I've even learned a lot of non-technical aspects in that moment. So that has still built me more strong enough to face any kind of situation. So should I say that uh, BRICS platform helps you in present better presentation of your work because you're yes, presenting it to your peers who are equally qualified and then you can go to bigger platforms in which you have gone and you have worked exactly. this mission innovation project. So very good. Congratulations for the success. Thank you, sir. And uh, you have also said that networking plays a very, very important role in developing collaborations, which is again a takeaway from this thing. Can you briefly touch us about the current highlights of solar energy research in India? So solar energy, earlier a lot of EPC players came into the platform just for installation and for just power gridding. But now people have started even talking about how we can put this offshore solar plants and what are the other platforms of integrating solar with energy storage. Of course, integrating energy storage is the biggest. People say solar is highly, uh, no, it is very uh, uh, cost. It is not cost effective or it is unaffordable. But in my point of view, now material people have started working in, on research on material side. Application perspective of people started working in taking solar to different applications like for solar PV integrated air conditioning system for building cooling. So many different applications are also started into picture. On the other side, some people work on converters and inverters and some other people like me who works more on development of energy storage for integrating the solar for the power application and as well as for meeting thermal demands. So like this, the solar is not only solar, any, if we talk about any renewable energy, definitely there are some flaws and problems are there. But as a researcher, we need to take it to the end point of commercial level. Normally people say research and development, but now because of the effect of DST and other funding bodies, like they say research, development, uh, deployment and commercialization. Of course, now we have came into the level of commercialization so whatever uh, the highlights that happens in solar day-to-day -day life the cost has slowly started dropping down and also the efficiency of the cells are also slowly it is improving earlier it was six percent now we have achieved nearly 24 percent by having some nano dopants and all the other additives so everywhere right from the material research and right from the application perspective and we are developing other kind of renewable energy I mean, energy storage technologies like compressed air storage and integrating pumped hydro for large scale power application like this different platforms are, are there not only battery storage people talk about only lithium-ion batteries and other kind of batteries 
but there are other alternates of course today national hydrogen mission is also there so for hydrogen generation how you can use renewable power so different platforms have came into picture so solar is it's it's not going to stop like it is going to still keep on continuing and maybe uh, the in in few days maybe all the energy generation will be only through solar like maybe from all the other maybe we have achieved more than 33% through solar maybe in future the percentage will go anywhere but at that time like we should know how to know the like, generation will be higher and transmission congestion issues may also come so we should be prepared how to do or integrate with storage technologies for efficient grid networking system so what she is trying to say that in time to come we have to put equal focus on smart energy grids where not only you can mix the different or origin of energies but also transmit it both ways uh, gayatri india is leader uh, in the international solar alliance i hope uh, to see you participating in those programs very soon my good wishes to you now as Thanks a last sir. question we are running out of time uh, if you could you would like to give some uh, message to the future aspirant of any of the young scientists even be it bricks lindo uh, sangai corporation or any other platform uh, what you would like to suggest to the future aspirants So only three points I would like to say. So first thing is, don't be afraid of your failures. You might write so many proposals, you might fail. First of all, you need to learn why you have failed and where you have failed. Like where we, when we submit even a proposal, sometimes when we fail, we write message to the DST or funding body, and they are also very clear where we have failed. They are ready to reply for us, and they are giving a very proper response to us. So. like that will help you to build a very good you have to build a very good cv when you are going to write or apply for a fellowship your cv determines everything so you should be in a position to write very good number of manuscripts develop your own patents and come out with your own technology first build yourself your cv and then learn from your mistakes and after that if you could have collaborated with so many good eminent people definitely you no know, they will help you to write the proposal or fellowship application at the same time they you, they will be ready to give you endorsement and letter of recommendation all these things will finally put you out to come out with a very good successful fellowship application and i'm sure for bricks or any other funding body build a good cv learn from your failures and do very good networking i'm sure your fellowship will be successful and as you said earlier uh, interaction at young scientist platform with your peers is always helpful in in presenting yourself in a much better shape than you before you present before team of experts who review your proposal so that's the additional advantage thank you very much gayatri for the day today uh, it was wonderful talking to